Pink System Coordinator with the RNAO. RNAO is the professional association for nurses in Ontario and promotes excellence in nursing practice and advancing nurses' contribution to the healthcare system. RNAO has a signature program called the International Affairs and Best Practice Guidelines Centre that develops, disseminates, implements, and evaluates clinical and healthy work environment best practice guidelines. One of our best practice guidelines is on smoking cessation, and as part of our smoking cessation initiative, we hold regular webinars to support building capacity among nurses and other healthcare providers to implement and sustain smoking cessation best practices. We want our webinars to be interactive and engaging. We encourage you to type in a question or comment in the chat box during the presentation. For 15 minutes of our uh, presentation, um, our presenters will address all of these questions. However, in the event that we run out of time, our presenters have agreed to respond to your questions in writing. We will be archiving our slides on our tobacco-free-rnao.ca website so that they'll be available for future viewing. Our speakers today are Lindsay Taylor and Tyler Moon from Leave the Pack Behind. Lindsay Taylor is the Assistant Manager of Communications and Programming at Leave the Pack Behind. Lindsay has been working in tobacco control for eight years with a special focus on developing and delivering effective, tailored cessation and prevention programs for young adults. Since 2009, Lindsay has co-managed Leave the Pack Behind's provincial programming pro projects and social marketing campaigns alongside a team of particular, particularly talented, efficient, and determined health promotion professionals. In 2013, Lindsay led Leave the Pack Behind's off-campus program expansion with the goal of making the program accessible to all young adults in the province by building strong, mutually beneficial partnerships with numerous local, provincial, and national organizations. Annie Lindsay manages all aspects of the Would You Rather contest, which she has steered from its roots as a contest occurring at a dozen post-secondary institutions to one of the largest quit and win contests in the country, successful in engaging over 13,000 participants for the past two years. And we welcome Lindsay today. We also have with us Tyler Moon, who is also Assistant Manager of Communications and Programming at Leave the Pack Behind. Tyler has been working with Leave the Pack Behind since 2013 with over 15 years of experience in health promotion. As an assistant manager, communications and programming, Tyler co chairs the programming directions of Leave the Pack Behind on campus and in communities across Ontario. Tyler actively collaborates with public health units, government partners, non-government organizations, and various other on and off campus stakeholders to increase the availability of and access to Leave the Pack Behind's evidence-based programs and services for young adults. Tyler has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Community Health from Brock University and a Master of Health Science degree in Health Leadership from Athabasca University. With a lifelong passion for living a balanced, healthy lifestyle, Tyler enjoys being active and spending time with his wife and two children. The focus of today's webinar is on the smoking and quitting behaviors of young adults which is the age group with the highest smoking prevalence in the province. Today's webinar will shed light on the social context of tobacco use and how this priority population view their tobacco use behavior. Alternative tobacco product use will also be discussed along with the association between tobacco products, alcohol, and marijuana. So welcome both Lindsay and Tyler, and I will go ahead and turn the presentation over to you now. So much, Jen, for that lovely introduction, and thanks very much to the RNAO for inviting Tyler and I to join you today for this webinar, all about young adult smoking and quitting behavior. So we hope we can shed light um, on some of the behaviors happening amongst this important population for you, and um, likely this will be a review of some things you already know, and hopefully you'll get some good information from us that you haven't heard before that may be helpful in your, in your individual practices. So a quick overview of what we'll be talking about with you today. Um, I'll do a quick overview about what tobacco use among young adults looks like right now in this country and in particular in Ontario. I'll discuss how young adults are smoking and what they're smoking to really get in deep in, in hopefully helping you understand how this age group is quite different and quite unique um, compared to the other age groups um, in Ontario. 
We'll also talk about how young adults want to quit and what cessation age fit these preferences. background as to where Tyler and I are coming from. Some of you may be familiar with the program Leave Pack Behind. Those who aren't, um, we've been funded by um, the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care here in Ontario. It's part of Smoke Free Ontario's strategy for the past 15 years. And what we do is we create um, evidence-based coordinated social marketing campaigns that we disseminate on campus and off campus in communities across the province and develop um, uh, interventions and programs for young adults who want to quit. And, and um, we make these available through our partnerships on campus with the medical centers. Um, we also hire peer health promotion teams that do a lot of peer-to-peer -peer outreach and support their fellow students. And um, the public health units and other agencies across the province of Ontario um, do some excellent work with us. We've got great partnerships um, that really make us able to give the programs that we develop here to young adults who aren't in school, who are in communities and workforce across the country. Um, so really our goal is to get um, tailored evidence-based resources into the hands of young adults who need them. So off, I'd just like to check in with you to see how the group is overall. Um, so the first question I'd like to ask you, if you could just um, select the option that um, fits you best, question, how knowledgeable do you feel you are about young adult smoking patterns? So I'll give you a moment, you can see on the right hand side that there are five options there. So just um, give yourself a minute, think about it and check off the option that's best for you. Okay, so it's coming in, so I'll send to close that. That's probably enough time. Um, and I'm to that. <clears throat> okay, I'm to that. So I'm going to skip this. Maybe we can, um, oh, there we are. Okay. Um, so it seems like most people on the phone are feeling somewhat or moderately knowledgeable about young adult smoking patterns. So I have a question to ask you, so I'm just checking off the next slide here. So most of you are slightly to somewhat uh, knowledgeable about uh, tobacco use among young adults. So how confident do you feel in addressing tobacco use with young adults? So take a moment and select the option that's best for you here. Okay, so I'll ask um, Jen again, if you don't mind closing and displaying the results, we'll see how everyone's feeling about their confidence in addressing tobacco use. Okay, most of the group is feeling somewhat or moderately confident. So that's great. I'm happy to hear um, that a number of people are even very confident um, in um, being among this age group when it comes to tobacco use. So that's fantastic news. And our goal today is really to help you feel more knowledgeable and more confident in addressing tobacco use with the population. So a snapshot of what tobacco use among Canadian young adults looks like. So in general, and this was mentioned in our introduction, we know that young adults have the highest smoking prevalence in the country. More adults are smoking than our youth or older adults. Although, compared to older adults, young adults do tend to be lighter smokers. So typically smoke fewer cigarettes a day compared to older adults. I'll draw your attention to the last bullet point on this slide, which really demonstrates what happens with tobacco use when you get into the young adult age category. You get very few youth are smoking. And as we get into the young adult age group, it doubles and doubles again. So there's really some very interesting things at play when we're talking about young adult tobacco use. And so we're going to spend some time talking about what those things are. 
Why young adult tobacco use be a priority for you? Um, most of you are healthcare providers, and you might be able to intervene directly with young adults one-on-one -on -one or on a group basis. Um, we already know that young adults use tobacco more than any other age group, but also something I feel not a lot of people know is that more young adults actually want to quit compared to any other age group. Um, I hear um, often that there's a misconception that young adults don't want to quit, so this age group doesn't end up being a priority when it comes to tobacco use intervention. It's really not true. Um, more young adults are using tobacco and more of them want to quit. But unfortunately, their quitting success is fairly limited. And one of the reasons for this might be the fact that young adults are the least likely to be asked about their tobacco use by a healthcare professional. So I think the more that we're able to talk together about how to talk to this group about their tobacco use, hopefully it's going to start to change. And I think there's already some excellent champions on the phone here that are doing this. Is now the time to intervene. Well, young adulthood is a very interesting time of life because it's associated with a very massive life transition. So in this period, young adults are experiencing new life roles and they're striving to manage their continually shifting self-identities, which is extremely important with this age group. Um, this is when an individual will move away from home and workforce, start going to school. They're likely to experience newfound freedoms, new challenges, new stressors. Um, that comes increased adult responsibilities, decreased family support, decreased supervision, and this often paves the way for young adults to experiment with different risky behaviors, and that includes, of course, tobacco use, alcohol use, marijuana, and other substance use. So this is really a time of increased vulnerability to smoking initiation. And what we know from the research is that about 20% of established smokers don't actually start their smoking until over the age of 18. So again, that sort of goes against um, most people's assumption that um, initiation of tobacco use ha happens in um, youth. That is true, but also there's a significant proportion of um, smokers that do not start until young adult age group. And the piece that we know here is that no matter when they started smoking, whether individuals started at age 8, age 15, or age 25, the time in life when they're most likely to escalate to daily nicotine-addicted smoking is in young adulthood. So this is a very unique time to intervene to stop smoking from escalating, to stop it before it becomes um, a behavior that's even harder to stop um, when nicotine addiction is at play, obviously. And the benefit is huge. We know that quitting before age 30 basically eliminates all risk of smoking-related illness. Um, so for that reason, we should really be trying um, to focus our time on preventing and stopping smoking with this age group. I'll convince you that this is um, a very important time period to um, assist with intervention. How do we do that? Um, so let's take a look at the different things that we need to know in order to intervene. First, I think that we need to spend some time talking about why young adults are such a unique group when it comes to tobacco use and quitting. And this shows really that young adults have very different patterns of tobacco use. Um, and in addition, tobacco plays unique roles in their life. Um, the environment they use tobacco products in is quite different, and the reasons they smoke are different. Um, so I'm going to get into these in just a moment. And then young adults have different reasons for quitting and have different quitting preferences than do older adults. So it's really important to know what those differences are so that you can perhaps ask the right questions and bring up the right topic of conversation when you're um, speaking to this audience. Um, there's different resources you may be able to refer to that um, you're not aware of just yet. Um, so hopefully some of these things um, will become more obvious to you as we go along. So, of course, not all young adults are social smokers, but I'd like to spend some time talking about the concept of social smoking and party smoking. Um, the title of this webinar today is Party Without the Smoke, and this is a social marketing campaign title that we have launched this past year. And so I'm like, I'd like to give you some of the research and some of our experience on why we think a campaign called Party Without the Smoke is essential for this audience. So um, not all smokers, of course, are, are social smokers, as I mentioned, but we've really seen a shift in the pattern of smoking among this audience over the past 10 years or so to social smoking. 
Um, I'm sure this is not the first time you've heard this term, um, but this is a review. Social smokers are typically not smoking daily. They're smoking in social situations, likely not on their own. And most importantly, the reason that they're smoking is for the social utility of it. What it does for them in social activities? Um, what role it allows them to play when they're out with friends, when they're somewhere that they may not know, um, know others. So smoking gives them sort of that tool to connect. Um, important part of this um, social smoking puzzle is self-identity. Um, and you may be aware of this already, but many social smokers do not see themselves as smokers. Um, the I smoke but I'm not a smoker concept is very prevalent among this age group. Um, and this has some really important implications. For instance, I don't smoke, I obviously don't need to quit. I mean, that's very straightforward. So messages about quitting um, tend to go in one ear and out the other among this um, important population. And very importantly as well, social smoking has become um, totally distinct in its own category from regular smoking. Um, age group, uh, a smoker is somebody who is dependent, who is desperate, who's at risk for negative health consequences and negative social stigma. And it's not something that uh, most young adults with social smokers identify with. So if you ask them if they're a smoker, uh, they are very likely going to say no. Uh, so that is not the right question to ask. So they see themselves as social smokers, which again is totally distinct from smoking in their mind and is not necessarily associated with the risks, the impacts, or the social consequences of being a smoker. It's seen as a very social behavior that is not serious, doesn't have many implications, and it definitely is not long-term. They're not seeing themselves as someone who smokes. This likely is not going to come up um, in their interactions with a healthcare professional, which is unfortunate because that can be a missed opportunity, again, to intervene when their behavior is at this level. About social smoking among young adults important to really focus on the environment where this behavior is happening. And specific to this age group, this is happening in the party environment with all of the other things happening in the party environment. Um, so primarily we're talking about alcohol here. So the vast majority of young adults who initiate in this age group or smoke socially report smoking mostly when alcohol consumption is involved. Um, Dr. Nictor from the University of Arizona um, did some very interesting interviews with social smokers in college campuses, and she found that over two-thirds of early smoking episodes occurred with concurrent alcohol use. And it's happening because um, what the young adults in Dr. Nictor's research um, said time and time again was that parts are really viewed as a social space where regular rules don't apply and smoking is acceptable. They view party time as distinctly different from normal time. Differences are okay, different things are wrong, it's a totally different space, and um, smoking in these situations is not considered real smoking, so not to be taken seriously in their mind. So quotes from Dr. Nichter's book called The Rise of Social Smoking on College Campuses, which is an excellent book if you're interested in this age group and this concept of social smoking. Um, so, for instance, Melanie says, I can't believe how serious you're taking this smoking a few cigarettes thing. It's not serious. That's the point. No one is being serious. And she says, sure, I smoke at parties, but I do it for fun. I'm not I'm a real smoker. That's so nasty. See here that someone that's um, identifying as a social smoker really doesn't want to be a, so a regular smoker. That's not something that's in their plan. They really feel like this is a short-term behavior. They're not going to be doing it in a couple of years. Um, they're not going to be doing it in other environments outside of that party time. It's, it's not part of the equation. So research say as far as whether or not party smoking is no big deal. Unfortunately, um, what we see from the research and what we've seen anecdotally from our experience with this population over the last 15 years is that it is actually pretty serious. Um, social smokers do progress from smoking only with friends to smoking in other situations with other people, for instance, when alone because they're stressed or they're bored. Um, so addiction can happen very quickly. 
Um, and I like the stat in the middle here. Um, I think it really um, translates um, the risk of social smoking is 50% of students who try smoking in college are still smoking four years later. Um, and half of those individuals are now nicotine addicted daily smokers. Um, so the risk is actually quite large as far as um, the risk of escalation to daily full-time long-term smoking. Um, so I believe this really points to um, how vital it is to intervene with social smokers at this stage um, so they don't become that um, individual who four years later is still doing it and they never intended to do it and it's not something they're happy with. It does it with their social identity. So for practice based on this, um, and, um, it's not a good idea to ask someone if they're a smoker for this age group. They're definitely going to say no, but it is a good idea to ask all young adults about any amount of tobacco use, you know, even if it's just Thursday to Saturday, it's something you can ask and get a response that sounds something like, well, I only smoke at parties, so I'm not really a smoker. And the answer to that might be, well, you know, about a quarter of people your age who are regular smokers now sit off just as party smokers. So if you find yourself smoking in more places than just parties, um, smoking more cigarettes, you really might be becoming addicted to nicotine. And um, so a message about how fast addiction can happen is important to give to individuals in this age group. Um, we learned from the research is that as few as two to four cigarettes a week put someone at risk of becoming a long-term dependent smoker. So very important a young adult hears from you as a healthcare professional that level smoking, social smoking, still smoking, it is harmful. There are risks of addiction. There are risks of health consequences. That's an important message um, that they hear from you. It's also important to explore with them what smoking does for them, uh, social utility, what are the benefits of smoking in their life? And it's important to explore that because if you are able to advise them to quit, those things are going to be their stumbling blocks. Those are going to be their triggers. So it's important to be aware of what those social utilities or those benefits are. I'll keep on with um, party smoking and focusing in on the environment where social smoking is happening. Um, I know a little bit more now, hopefully, on, um, on what's happening in these environments, but I'd like to take a minute to speak about what products are being used, because it's not just cigarettes. Um, what we are seeing in this audience is that um, there's really been a large shift, um, a little bit away from cigarettes, but the trend of using alternative tobacco products, things like hookah, cigarellos, um, vaping, um, these activities are increasing among our population. Um, in Ontario specifically, young adults' rate of experimenting with certain alternative tobacco products has been doubled in the past 10 years. In adult age group in particular, hookah vapes and little cigars and cigarellos are the most prevalent alternative tobacco products that we see. Um, and you might be surprised that young adults are using these products. And the reason that they are is because they perceive non-cigarette forms of tobacco to be much safer than traditional cigarettes. Um, they were raised in a generation that knew that cigarettes um, were deadly, um, but they're exposed to a lot of product ads in the media, online, social media, that reinforce the faulty message that, that these products are safer. Um, and so that is likely causing the high rates of experimentation that we're seeing. Um, to address some of the misconceptions um, and, and some of the prevalence rates of some of these alternative tobacco products. An alternative tobacco product that we see with this audience is hookah or water pipe. You can see picture here, which is used to smoke uh, tobacco and um, herb mixture called shisha. Um, right now, um, we're seeing that about one in three of young adults have used hookah, and this is up from 11% in 2006. The misconceptions I hear a lot um, is this is being used primarily by individuals from Middle Eastern descent. That's actually not true. Um, among this age group in the environment of party smoking, this is um, a very social activity. All different types of young adults are using um, hookahs or water pipes um, to smoke shisha. Um, it's really mainstream. It happens in residences, at universities. It happens at house parties. 
of course, there are shisha bars that have popped up um, across our country. Um, it is being used by everybody. And the misconception about the health effects is that the smoke is filtered through water, so it's really less dangerous. And that's really not true. Um, as far as toxic chemical exposure, um, a one hour uh, hookah smoking session is equivalent to smoking 100 cigarettes. And see on this slide here, um, the nicotine exposure is the same, and there's still a lot of risk um, with carbon monoxide exposure and, of course, all of those associated health impacts. Next, little cigars or cigarellos um, that we are seeing a lot in Canada. About 50% of young adults um, have smoked a little cigar or cigarello, um, but only 6% are current users. So this isn't as much as of a concern for us because we're seeing a lot of experimentation, but not a lot of continual use among this age category. Nice image here so you can see how the traditional cigar compares to um, cigarellas and little cigars, um, which a lot of youth and young adults have been attracted to because of the flavorings that have been available in the past, um, whether it's strawberry or watermelon or cookies and cream. Um, and this is a problem for us, of course, um, and because of the fermentation process. There are actually more tobacco-specific nitrosamines, um, which are the carcinogenic compounds um, in these tobacco products in little cigars compared to cigarettes. The common misconceptions here is that they're really not harmful because the smoke's not inhaled. Uh, but of course, that's not true, and the health effects, again, are the same as um, traditional cigarettes. I'm going to talk about tobacco product use in the young adult age group in the social environment without talking about vaping. Um, I'm sure many of you are aware and are seeing in your daily life the rise of the electronic cigarette. Um, uh, how fast this has become mainstream, um, how many different generations there are of the products. Um, and, and, and that's really grown, and, and the market has expanded because of the lack of regulation that we have um, currently, and that is about to change, which is great. Um, but currently, um, the e-cigarettes themselves and the juice or the liquid that um, are put into these devices uh, are most likely just made in somebody's basement um, with no safety standards, with products they've ordered online, and they put a nice brand on them, and they're making a lot of money. Um, I know someone who owns one of these companies, and they just purchased a $50,000 car cash um, because they've made so much money over the past year selling um, selling some of the um, e-liquid that's going in these devices. So that problem, you really don't know what you're exposed to. Um, about one in five young adults have tried vaping. Um, uh, recently today, actually, I heard that this could be as high as 30 or 35 percent now. Um, so, primarily, we are seeing that it's the current smokers that are using these products, um, whether they're using them to attempt to quit and substitute their e-cigarette for um, their traditional cigarette, or they're using them uh, in places that they can't um, smoke a traditional cigarette. And totally, what we're hearing um, more and more from some of our different partners is that um, it, it appears that the trend of non-smokers using these products um, in social situations uh, because they're innovative, because they're new, um, that might be starting to rise, which could be a problem for us because, of course, if there's a nicotine, we don't know if um, these products might act as a gateway to traditional cigarettes. So, of course, um, we need a lot more research on these products in general. Put up this slide to draw your attention to the fact that um, the party environment, which often includes alcohol, marijuana, and all these substances, um, these things are all being used together. So if you're speaking to someone who's using one of these products, it is very likely they are using other things as well. So it's important to use a co-use lens with this age group um, and really consider these partying behaviors, cigarettes, and alternative tobacco products as interrelated. So it's very important to address these together. And so the reason for the use of these products is often the same. Um, if you call the social enhancement, a better buzz in our environment, relation and peer influence is, is really the driving force um, when we're talking about this age group. Practice um, in climate of all of these different products is in addition to asking all young adults about any amount of tobacco use. It's important to ask about use of any and all tobacco products, uh, not just cigarettes. 
interesting points of conversation um, is debunking some of the myths about alternative tobacco products. And um, particularly for those individuals who are smoking cigarettes, um, getting across the point that use of, whether it's marijuana or hookah or vaping, um, use of these other products can really undermine a quit attempt or cause the next smoker to relapse. And we don't want to see that happen, of course. So it's really important that young adults hear from you that these products are harmful, they can cause addiction, and they can make quitting harder. Of course, um, it's a good idea for them to stop using um, all of these products. I hand it off to Tyler to talk a little bit about um, the quitting preferences and what's available for this audience um, in Ontario specifically. Um, I'll just leave you with this. So based on the research that I've described to you, as I mentioned earlier, um, under the pack behind, we've created a social marketing campaign called Party Without the Smoke that we have already um, implemented and put in market on all of the universities and colleges in the province and hope to do the same in communities so that we can expose all young adults in the province to these messages. Um, we have three main messages, which you can see here. If alternative tobacco products are safer than cigarettes, you might be mistaken. If you smoke when you're partying, don't start now. And she'll smoke, recognize you could become a full-time addicted smoker. So we really feel that what the research is showing us, what the trend in tobacco use is right now with young adults, that these messages are, are really key to get across. So this is our way of doing it. And um, we're in the middle of some evaluation of this campaign now. Um, we have about 2,000 intercept interviews um, from across the province coming in um, so we can determine the effectiveness of this campaign. Um, because again, our hope is that we can uh, launch this again this uh, in 2016 and hopefully have a broader reach of all young adults in the province. Uh, me, I'll pass it on to Tyler. Great. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about cessation preferences and quitting strategies for, for young adults. cessation approaches that are used uh, for reaching young adults, uh, quit and win contests, uh, materials, uh, nick placement therapy, go uh, and group counseling, online support, and cold key. I'm just going to ask you a question here, Paul. Uh, what is the preferred cessation method used by young adults? So I'll just give you to complete that for us. Hey, Jenna, pull for us. Great. Um, so actually, I'm not going to give you the correct answer right now. I'm just going to the next slide. So we do know that uh, young adults have, have uh, preferred methods of uh, quitting uh, they need to be inexpensive or free. Uh, they need to be convenient and effortless, uh, flexible, innovative, and tailored to uh, the unique needs of uh, young adults. Um, so same question again. Based on what I've just told you, I want to see if your answers are different. Open up this poll again if you, you could the uh, the question again and see if your answers are any different than the first time. Close the poll again for us. That's great for completing the, the poll there. 
Um, so the, actually the correct answer is turkey. Uh, so many young adults will quit cold turkey. They prefer the unassisted and that self-directed approach. Uh, so they often think it will be hard to quit if they do, do not identify as someone as addicted. Uh, we do know that the five, per, five to seven percent have a success rate of uh, quitting cold turkey. Uh, but we do, do know that young adults do have an interest uh, in either having some NRT support or um, connecting to, to uh, other materials that are out there to, to help them. So we'll talk about that. So over the last 15 years, Leave the Pack Behind has done a lot of research and, and ex has experience in supporting young adults and their quitting preferences and supports. Uh, today, I'm going to go through the different cessation options, review what research has said, and share with you some interventions that Leave the Pack Behind offers because of research. And when contests, so we know that young adults have the highest smoking prevalence rate, we know they want to quit, and we know they're least likely to be asked by a health professional. Uh, so, although cessation treatments like, like pharmacopoeia and counseling are very effective, we don't obviously fit the preferences of young adults, and they have a very limited reach. So you know that quit and win contests are very successful and, uh, and approachable for young adults. Uh, they, they fit their preferences, they're independent, they're free, uh, they're easily accessible. Um, a lot of times, uh, quit and contest, win contests will actually have prizes, incentives, um, and they can help either quit, reduce, or even su uh, success of their, their, their smoke free. So we want to create, a, obviously, a good network of that social support. Uh, sometimes contests can have some buddy support or that supportive email available. So one we offer from Leave the Path Behind is a contest actually that's running right now. It's uh, called Would You Rather? And this contest is open to actually any young adult of ages 18 to 29. And we have four different categories uh, that the uh, contestants are able to enter. Uh, this one is the Quit for Good uh, category. Actually motivates uh, the smokers to quit for at least six weeks, uh, and to help them make uh, initiate a quit attempt. Uh, the second category we have is called keep the count. Uh, so they actually have to reduce their tobacco consumption by fifty percent. Um, and then the, the third category we have is called party without the smoke. So building just on the party without the smoke uh, campaign we just ran that uh, Lindsay mentioned. This is a category we have offered in the uh, Would You Rather Quit and Win contest. Uh, this actually helps people uh, refrain from smoking in that social kind of atmosphere and, and when they're drinking alcohol. And then the last category is called the don't start and win. So celebrating those ones that are, have not, that are either a non-smoker or an ex-smoker and, and looking at a prevention method and helping them uh, and that success and, and recognizing they're, they are that smoke-free lifestyle and, and wanting to maintain that. Um, all these categories have kind of uh, value incentives, so we're wanting people to enter. And it's available to anyone in the, in the province of Ontario. Uh, and our campuses and our, our partners in the province are promoting this for, uh, for us right now. Uh, this registration is open online, so if you go to woodrather.ca, you'll be able to, to find that. Uh, and then you can see where it closes on the January 24th uh, there. The thing that we offer from Leave the Pack Behind is um, we know that young adults prefer self help approaches and are more likely to use any. Than any uh, assisted intervention. So we let content in self help materials need to be developed and tailored uh, based on evidence because a lot of times young adults will challenge what the evidence is. We also include the suggestions and uh, how to make sure it's uh, bring them to quit and how to cope with relapse. Uh, lots of different stresses, especially on the uh, college and university perspective that they have on campus. So we need to make sure we're addressing that. Uh, ideas that we suggested that need to be in self-help materials. Um, there are four different self-help materials that we have from Leave the Pack Behind. The first two uh, booklets, actually Smoke and Quit, are uh, evidence-based booklets that we've developed that are tailored specifically for on-campus uh, for either college or university students. And they address a lot of the stressors that, that happen in kind of that lifestyle. The third booklet there, the purple one, you know you want to, he actually is built for both on this 
and uh, in the community. And this booklet actually is more of a supporting booklet that you can actually help someone who wants to quit. And this booklet, something is different. The booklet was developed uh, for actually in the community based from the Smoke and Quit booklet. Um, but it's actually just one booklet that we have offered for community partners to use um, and that you can actually help if you want to help anyone else to, to quit there. Materials through our Smokers Helpline uh, partners or through contacting us at least back. Treatment therapy. So research has told, tells us that young adults are interested in using nicotine replacement therapy to quit. However, they know a barrier is cost. Um, so, a consultation with a medical professional and the use of NRT or other medications you know that can can double the likelihood of the success. We definitely want to make sure this is something that we can offer to, to young adults. As, as an online platform to offer uh, nicotine replacement therapy for free. Uh, we offered the complete eight week supply of the um, Material of the uh, product, depending on what uh, for the, the gum or the patch. Um, this online platform has been uh, live since October 2013. Um, so you would fill out a uh, an online set that would then determine um, what, what product you, you need. Uh, the eight weeks supply of the, the product, a uh, page uh, instruction booklet, uh, and then again an age tailored specific. Uh, Material, either the smoke quit or the hate something different booklet. Um, set of order day is uh, just over nine, almost 10,000 uh, people have ordered the, the since uh, just over two years. And actually, had about 15,000 smokers have received a referral to Smokers Online, which is offered through our online platform. So, it's successful the last just over the last two years. There's definitely an uptake and an interest for young adults to, to take the uh, NRT products. Uh, here's an example of uh, something we received through an email and um, through our Facebook page. So it's going to read a, a parts of this here. I really appreciate this, this the ability to use smoking cessation products without the cost that they should have gone retail, in retail is a huge relief and a motivation for my quitting. To quit without the cost takes a huge financial stress of off me. So you can see here, based on our testimonials that have come into us, this, this is great to hear the feedback and that people are receptive and that young adults are really, really wanting this information from us and able to and able to get that. So we from your support from us, you can actually help promote the, the accessibility of the energy uh, system uh, from us. Next, counseling. So young adults, smokers are least likely of all age groups actually to be asked, offered, or even be used as a method of quitting. But well, this is not because young adults have less interest in quitting or make fewer, fewer quitting adults. 43.2% uh, of young adults on post-secondary campuses have been asked about tobacco use by a physician. Uh, as you can see, young adults would really welcome this advice and support. Uh, so that we can continue to promote that. Uh, and we offer a lot of support through our clinicians on campuses uh, through the path behind. Another goal for uh, young adults we know is text and mobile support. And so we know with technology these days, uh, it's become more pervasive in young adults' everyday lifestyles. Uh, mobile interventions, both text support and, uh, and apps that are out there, are free, easy to use, and immediately accessible when you need which, which we know align with what young adults' preferences are. So phone apps have become a focus of means for engaging with young adults. Not only are young adults most likely to download the apps, but they're almost in, interested in using the app. And also we notice that young adults are really interested in, in using apps that are more that kind of health uh, style. So it's out there that a lot of that leads the path behind uh, promotes. Uh, it actually was developed uh, with uh, Propel out of the University of Waterloo in par partnership with the Pack Behind a few years ago. And there's an app that is, is free, it's easy to use, um, and that can be downloadable, and it offers tips and strategies how to overcome barriers. So this app called Crush the Crave, 
Um, if you haven't heard or seen of it, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, again, it's something we know that a lot of young adults are really interested in, again, because it's that free, accessible, and um, where the young adults are. So uh, I'll leave the pack behind some of those it has these available resources out there. So the self-help booklets, as I mentioned, the currently uh, Would You Rather a Contest that's running right now, and again, the free nicotine patches and gum, um, the different materials that we offer as, as interventions, um, again, and the, also the uh, tech support and apps as well. I'm going to move on to uh, engaging young adults in discussions about tobacco use. Um, We had about, just did a Facebook study, we had about 200 people uh, participate, and the top, re top reasons why they're wanting to quit are because of current uh, performance, addiction and feeling in control, uh, they identify and don't, th don't want to fit with where we are, and they'd be a positive role model for, for others. So examples of what, what they're saying. Uh, actually, on our Would You Rather uh, win contest right now, you, you uh, enter, you enter, one of the questions on there is, I would rather dot, dot, dot. So here's some examples of some testimonials that uh, people have put in when they're entering the contest. And the young, adults, uh, young adult smokers have shared with us their reasons for quitting. And be because of their you know smell of breath, the clothes, and their car, the financial costs, um, influence their their partner, or family, or friends. They have fewer, uh, as we know, the as the tobacco legislation, they have fewer public places left to smoke, and good health, and they want to, to prevent premature aging of their skin. So these are examples of what why people are motivated to to quit. So just what we've learned is that all young adults about any amount of any type of tobacco use, so they need to ask about that. The adult is uniquely beneficial time to advise and support smoking cessation. And we know that one size does not fit all. So remember that youth, young adults, and adults all have different motivations and reasons for, for smoking and quitting. And that's it. Thanks. Great, Tyler and Lindsay, for your excellent presentation today. Uh, we'll now take a few minutes to do a question and answer portion. So just a reminder that if you do have a question for Tyler or Lindsay, that you can type your questions or comments into the chat box. And uh, we did have a question come up from Kelly. And Kelly asked, can you speak to the January 2016 Regulation, and I believe um, Kelly was referring to the regulations, new regulations come the new year around electronic cigarettes, but please correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly. I think that um, that's my understanding too with Kelly's question. So um, okay. the minister announced um, an electronic cigarette act 2015 on the province of Ontario, which would prohibit sales of e-cigarettes to minors. And um, restrict the use of e-cigarettes in smoke-free places. So, for instance, on playgrounds, on patios, nine, meeting, nine meters from entrances and exits of care facilities, that sort of thing. So, um, that, uh, pieces of that act are supposed to come um, on January the 1st, so one month today. And it's my understanding that the province will be doing a public education um, campaign to educate the public on what these regulations are and how they should be following. And we had another question as well um, from Kendra, who's just wondering when Leave the Pack Behind will have NRT available again. Okay, um, thanks, Kendra. Yes, we get asked this all the time. And sorry, I don't have a specific answer for you right now. Um, certainly, we feel like, um, based on what Tyler was sharing with you, young adults want this product for free and they use it. Um, so we believe it's very important to continue providing no cost, eight weeks of um, NRT to young adults in this province. Um, currently, we are waiting to hear on funding um, from the ministry for us to be able to buy more product and ship it up to the province. Um, we currently don't have money in our current budget to do that, but we are very optimistic that um, we will get this soon 
And as soon as we will, as soon as we get it, we will be updating our partners. Um, it will be on our website, and we recommend that young adults follow official Facebook page um, because we will be, um, of course, posting there as soon as we're able to um, set this again and take orders. They actually um, on campuses in the province, some uh, campus health centers still do have NRT. So some young adults who are um, students at publicly funded institutions may still have access to some free products through their health care um, clinic. And just the same vein, there was just a question around, um, can you adults who are not uh, enrolled in post-secondary in college or university, are they still able to access the free nicotine replacement therapy when it's available? Absolutely, yes. You can go on our online platform, anyone of ages 18 to 29, doesn't matter where they are, as long as they're in the province of Ontario. Um, another question that came through was uh, in regards to the fact that uh, it looks like young adult males have a higher smoking rate than young adult females. Is there any um, research, any idea as to what you could attribute that difference? Um, yeah, my familiarity with the gender differences is that um, uh, males seem to progress in their smoking behavior um, faster. So we do see a discrepancy between male and female smoking in that more males are smoking. Um, but actually, when we start to look at the older age groups into the mid and late 20s, we see that females actually end up catching up. Um, so there is actually an interesting relationship there. Um, so. Um, as far as reasons why, I'm not familiar totally with the research there. We are trying to do things to better reach young adult males, and I know it's not just Leave the Pack Behind um, that's doing that, but I will say um, one of the things we're doing um, with our organization is um, developing a partnership with the Canadian Armed Forces uh, military bases uh, throughout this province to better reach um, males that are um, in those communities. So. Um, if anyone um, has any comments or suggestions on that, we'd be happy to um, talk about that offline as well. Wonderful. Another question, um, have you heard of any instances where young adults have used marijuana products such as hash oil or, or the like in electronic cigarettes? Yeah, we've definitely heard that uh, come through a lot of our, our, with our, our campus teams. Uh, they've said that we have, we've also heard that as well. So. A lot of times we know that that parting, like Lindsay had indicated, that parting lifestyle, they're using all these different alternative tobacco products. So uh, it's happening out there, unfortunately. And have you heard of chew being used in, as an alternative for cigarettes in areas where there is no smoking allowed? Yeah, I think um, at the core of it, um, what we know is that's the tobacco industry's um, purpose in creating some of these um, emerging new products is because we have uh, quite strong legislation prohibiting the use of cigarettes. So um, things like e-cigarettes and smokeless forms of tobacco that um, it has um, police. Um, certainly, um, that was the original purpose of coming up with those products. So yes, I mean, um, again, I would say that we've heard of We've heard of individuals at stages of doing that as well, but um, choose not something we see a lot of. Um, no, it's not something as, as common as, as the other alternative tobacco products is used. For and uh, another question um, that's come in is um, uh, I would like to know if the pamphlets and booklets from Leave the Pack Behind are available um, for those individuals who are out of outside of Ontario. Um, and the example was given um, from Kateri that she's a prevention, uh, prevention worker on tobacco reduction policy on a Mohawk territory where English is spoken and it can be hard to find resources. Most, yeah. most definitely, for sure. Um, I can provide our contact uh, there as well, so you can just contact us there and uh, we'll definitely send these materials for you. Thank you to see how we might be able to tailor some of our resources or make them available to your population. So, absolutely. And, uh, and similarly, uh, Cynthia asking, can I request the booklets? You know you want to quit and hey, something is different. And can that be ordered online then, those, those resources? Um, you, can be, you can email us and we'll set you up with the um, order forms. And we definitely, um, if you're in Ontario and you're seeing uh, this age group, we'd be happy to 
they'll request or put you in contact with um, some local um, people that might have these resources already for you. So please get in touch with us and we'll work together with um, what might be best for your audience. Perfect. Another question, um, if a young adult is using an alternative tobacco product, um, such as hookah, not necessarily smoking cigarettes, but let's say using hookah, can they also enter the would you rather test? Yes, and in fact, um, the category that's called party without the smoke, um, that's the purpose of that category. So we really um, encourage users of all tobacco products, and we actually include marijuana in the category as well. Um, if they want to give up that product that they're using, most likely in social party circumstances, they can sign for that category, and absolutely they can win the money even if they don't smoke cigarettes. Great. Thank you. And a comment from uh, Martin. Um, have you looked at the printed resource On the Road to Quitting, Guide to Becoming a Non-Smoker for Young Adults, put out by Health Canada? Yes, yes, definitely we've looked at that. Um but just our what I meant our materials there are, are um specifically targeting to the stressors in the in the lifestyle of young adults. So it's why we've developed tailored materials that we know are effective for, for the audience. So we have put different resources out there, but we've actually developed our own because they're gonna be tailored to the specific age group. Yeah, and we actually published um we published the results of our um trial with our book booklet Smoke Quit, and um, in that trial, we compared the effectiveness of our age-tailored booklets to um, a general resource, um, uh, not for young adults, but the one you're mentioning is for young adults, yes, um, as well. But um, if anyone's interested in that, we'd be happy to send that uh, resource along. I know for many of you, it's important to see the research, but um, absolutely, we're familiar with that guide and, and its excellence as well. Wonderful. I think that is it for our questions today. I don't think any further have come through. Um, so I think we will leave it there. And once again, thank you very much to Lindsay and Tyler and the team that leaves the pack behind for today's excellent uh, webinar. Also, we would like to thank you uh, as our audience for participating today. Um, all of our webinar participants will receive an email from RNAO within the next 24 hours or so, and it will link you to a short evaluation survey for today's webinar. Once you've completed the survey, you'll be able to print out a certificate of completion. So we hope that you will join us for our upcoming webinars in the new year. Please check our tobacco-free RNAO website on an ongoing basis for a list of upcoming webinars and events. Thanks once again to leave the path behind and for you for participating. And we wish everyone a great afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Oh, oh.